All right, welcome folks. Mill Spec Osmoker here. This is going to be your sit rep. It is Wednesday. It's about 11 a.m. Central Time coming to you from the great state of Texas. It is 525-22. And so without further ado, let's hop on over to our board. Uh, just a reminder, uh, just uh, don't forget the new app is out there. Before I got over there, I need to make sure I cover this. It is up. You should be getting push notifications from it now. And uh, it, it is searchable, and so you should be able to find that out there. But that is our new app. It's free to download, and it will give you uh, basically all the blogs, the shop, anything and everything that we do. And so I just wanted to point that out as a reminder. Uh, so anyway, it is up. So at your leisure, if you don't already have it, go grab it. And uh, let's jump on over here to the board. Now, let's see what we got going on here. It has been a little busier uh, in terms of NATO. Uh, you can see this is kind of a roll up. Now, we'll go into that a little further uh, in detail. But let's get over here to our watch list real fast. Just kind of show you what's going on. Um, over there, we got 703 doing a little bit of routes. Again, these things are mapping battlefields and looking at, at uh, ground content, right? So reconnaissance flights of B703 and then R135. We do have a little Brio in there and a Q4. Very, very active and busy today over that particular region. Uh, and of course, a little Navy P3 out there too, which is looking at the water, right? Uh, sub, sub Hunter. Uh, but you can see different levels all along that border by Ukraine and Constanta. And uh, then let's get over here to the US. We'll take a quick look at what's going on here. Again, more P8 activity. This actually was happening last night as well. We'll talk about that in just a second. We had a little bit of an uptick in activity off the east coast of Florida last night. That one there and that one there, uh, pretty far north, but P8s, again, subhunters. Those are Poseidon uh, aircraft. And then we've got a couple G5s, look like they're headed westbound. And a B-52 coming back into the U.S. and a Q-9 up over right on that Canada border. And then another 703 here, U.S.-wise, E-6, R-135. We are just killing it today with the surveillance. And then if you want to talk about Ghost in the Machine, let's get up to the top here. And there are your military intelligence birds uh, floating along up there at about 80,000, 90,000 feet, just watching every move you make. So... Um, okay, now that is basically our watch list. Let's take a look at the heavies. I want to show you what's been happening with those. Now, East Coast, again, this is this morning, crazy busy. Always. I don't know what it is, man. East Coast seems to be the spot that we uh, are operating out of. Uh, everything else is kind of an afterthought. This has been really kind of the staple for the last two months. Um, and then over here into Europe, you can see the spaghetti chart here. Very, very active and busy. Of course, you can still see our, our traces for um, the watch list birds doing the recon there in white. But yeah, all the way up here into Finland, uh, all the way down into Spain. And uh, it's uh, very spread out now, but it looks like we have got uh, ourselves covered across Europe and into the Middle East fairly well. You can see all the way up along the border, past Belarus and uh, yeah this is uh, again they continue to just branch out now I, they do still have that NATO exercise going on but it's not anything significant from what I can tell and uh, looks more to be water a uh, water exercise than anything else now if we get over to the air refueling aspect of it let's take a quick look just to show you this is it for Europe in terms of air refuelers, which would indicate that we don't have quite as many fighters up right now over there. And then East Coast, again, popping. You can see a lot of stuff going on northeast as well as over D.C. and then down south into kind of uh, South Carolina, Georgia. And then out here in the middle of the U.S., um, again, it's just uh, kind of sporadic. Looks like we've got more fighters up over the U.S. than we do anywhere else and you can see this one over Florida again we had some activity yesterday over Florida to see that there is uh, an air refueler up doing a little stuff not shocking um, if it is what we think it may be uh, given the fact they were sub hunters uh, let's kind of look at East Coast last night now I'll tell you that I was watching a C-130 go do laps up and down uh, the East Coast 
Uh, you can see these are P8s. We actually about 7 p.m. last night had uh, five, four, five P8s uh, all over the East Coast, all the way down to South Florida, up to actually the top part of the United States. I mean, it's kind of strange to see them go all the way north like that, but there is water up there. So nonetheless, uh, yeah, you can see they were very active. Those are uh, P8 Poseidons. And so, uh, but that was last night. And of course there was a C-130 that was also running routes back and forth up that. I couldn't capture it in our screenshot here, but, uh, but he was out there because I was looking at it from my uh, handheld app. So uh, it looks like maybe we had uh, some sub activity Maybe off our East Coast. It could have been anybody, Russia, China, maybe getting a little close. Uh, but they definitely took an interest in it, and it was a kind of a late-night scurry, uh, you know, to get out there and start looking at stuff. So, um, okay, so let's talk about Ghost in the Machine for a second. I don't know if you guys have seen this video. Uh, the Army put one out. It's a PSYOP video. Uh, the only reason that it drew my attention was because there are a couple elements in it that uh, kind of pertain to where we were uh, maybe two years ago, okay? And so um, I'm going to show you the video. It's condensed. It's not the full three minutes. I did put a link to that video down in the, um, uh, in the description. Uh, but I will tell you, too, if you talk to uh, other Green Berets, I say other like I'm one. I'm not a tip of the spear guy. But if you talk to Green Berets, I've watched a couple reviews on this video, and I've talked to a couple of my buddies uh and uh they kind of take a little bit of offense when they start talking about tip of the spear uh because uh it is not really uh the video is a true army recruiting video it shows a lot of stuff that you'll never do uh if you're in psyops and uh it actually shows a lot of green beret action in there you can see some uh some uh some high speed dudes in there right but uh, i cut most of that stuff out i condensed this down to about 30 seconds only because it's pertinent. Uh, some of the things that we will see in there, I think are interesting, again, data points. Uh, but here we go. I'm just gonna show you and I'll kind of talk to it for a second. Uh, but this is the video I'm talking about. Yeah, we've seen the Godfather thing. You see the chess pieces, um, you know, guys working from behind, just kind of behind the scenes. That's really what they do, right? Uh, from a PSYOP perspective. And so I, you know, if you bounce back two years, you think about some of the stuff that took place. We know that the whole 17 was a, was a PSYOP thing. Notice the clown there, right? Uh, I do want to point that out because that is a big, big deal. We know if you look at the operations going on in Ukraine, uh, it is very clearly a, uh, a stand-up or an organizational uh, aspect uh, from what we've done from 1946 to now in the Ukraine relative to uh, Secret Squirrel stuff, right? And so just want to point that out. Um, but that video is basically Ghost in the Machine. It's, uh, it's talking about it's a recruiting uh, mechanism for the Army for PSYOPs. Uh, but the reason I point out the whole chess piece thing is I want to show you something. I, you may remember I actually wrote an article up. Early on, this is back when Trump was in office, called the Sicilian Defense D5. It has to do with these chess pieces, right? Uh, the fact that they are showing that in the PSYOP piece. Uh, if you're familiar with D5, it's basically a chess move, and uh, it actually has a, what they call the dragon, if you call it the D5. But it basically, uh, you are playing offensively from a defensive position. Wrap your head around that one, but... Uh, I, it was, a, it was a write up that I did because I was watching everything unfold and this D5 kept coming up. I just want to point that out. Uh, it basically comes down to your last move and either you are successful or you're not successful. Uh, but the fact that they are showing uh, the chess pieces, the fact they're showing the clown put on his makeup uh, and it, talking about PSYOP stuff, I just want to point that out. They do show a lot of stuff with door kicking and all that stuff, that would be your Green Beret side, and that is not PSYOP side. Those guys are going to be in a trailer somewhere doing stuff uh, remotely uh, where your Green Berets or your Delta guys are going to be the ones out actually tip of the spear. All right, so anyway, just wanted to point that out. I thought it was an interesting video. It's a very cool video to say the least, but I've been asked about it, and uh, it is, uh, you know, that is the future of war, no doubt about it from a cyber perspective, but... Um, uh, it is a uh, just a data point 
as you watch the things, just knowing that we too are being manipulated. And, um, uh, you know, at first I thought maybe a little bit of hope that uh, something was getting ready to shake loose, uh, that they were kind of indicating that, um, you know, do you have a coup or what's going on? I don't know. But uh, the timing of it I thought was interesting. But uh, at the end of the day, um, just hope those guys are on our side, right? And so anyway, okay, off to the races here. Let's look at our volcanic activity. I just want to show you the latest and greatest. We've got eight volcanoes popping. You can see this one up here in um, Russia. We get one in Japan. And then this one, uh, Mainam, which is down in uh, kind of the uh, Papua New Guinea area. This whole spot's been really popping lately. And then um, we've got five actually along here from Central America down to South America. This is pretty common. These guys are very active. Uh, but uh, this one pops on and off from time to time. But we've got eight. That's, that is a larger than normal number. Um, I, like I said, I've seen it up to 11 and I think 14 was our record. And so uh, keep our eye on this stuff. This one here you can see is blowing pretty, pretty heavily. Uh, thankfully, it's going north, but every once in a while you see it kick out, uh, out over the uh, Pacific and head towards the West Coast. All right, there is that one. Now, let's get over here real fast while we're talking about volcanic activity. Let me pull this over because it managed to close itself out. Uh, just to show you what's going on with the TFRs, you will see, uh, looks like we've got uh, some stuff going on here. I don't, uh, that's a, a VIP. It uh, looks like Flashbang is headed that way into that side of the city, outside of the uh, Senior Living Center round zone. Uh, and then uh, we've got, uh, looks like he's headed home for the weekend. And then this is air show stuff at the top. Now, if we go to the left, I do want to point out, uh, this is space operations. This could have very well been kind of tied to what we saw last night with the P8s, um, because that is a TFR and that is in the same range uh, as that C-130 was out there running that route. Now that C-130 could have been actually just clearing the, air, the, the space uh, if there was gonna be a launch or just doing a, uh, some training on clearing space uh, and making sure everything was, was open. But um, that is kind of very similar to the route of the C-130 I saw and the P-8 activity in this general area. So tied together maybe, um, wouldn't be surprised depending on what kind of launch it is to have uh, the Chinese or the Soviets out there or somebody else with one of their subs right along that coast in international waters. We do know they are down here in Cuba uh, pretty frequently. So uh, you may notice the blue boxes, uh, lots and lots of power outages. At one point, I'd say half the state of Texas was out from these storms that came through last night. Uh, but uh, anyway, just pointing that out, that is uh, uh, something I, it seems to be happening more frequently. Uh, space Operations TFR here. Uh, this is Beale Air Force Base. Uh, that's a normal TFR. And then we get up here, uh, you'll notice we still have this one here that's a Hazards. Uh, this one at the Base Operations. And then we've got a little bitty two TFRs out here, Hazards. This one's actually volcano related, uh, which is uh, interesting. Don't see that very often from a TFR perspective. I do see the ash alerts as we point out. Uh, but that one right there is like telling people stay clear, don't fly over it kind of deal. Uh, just nothing but a volcano. So um, anyway, there is that from a TFR perspective. Let's get into flashbang and his schedule. Looks like today, uh, eyes on this one, all right? Uh, definitely, uh, we see what just took place in Texas that is horrific and, uh, you know, my heart, my, just my thought, my heart bleeds for, for the folks down there and my prayers are out for them. Uh, and their families. Um, this is a very, very tough time and not a good situation. I will tell you though, Texas is the hinge pin. If you can uh, create enough havoc in Texas from a gun perspective uh, and get the guns knocked down out of the Texas hands, um, the rest of the world will follow. Uh, Texas is basically kind of like the last, the last holdout in terms of of gun owners and, and Second Amendment rights. Florida, probably the same way, uh, but Texas is definitely kind of cowboy state, right? And so uh, very strong hold here in terms of guns. And so if you notice, there seems to be an uptick here in Texas with gun-related activities. Uh, there is a reason for that. Uh, you can bet your bottom dollar. So anyway, just want to point that out. That looks like uh, eyes on. Uh, God knows what's coming through that one, all right? 
Okay, let's get over here, just talk a little bit on the news perspective, just show you, uh, we had some jets scrambling there uh, and a joint Russian-Chinese patrol over the Pacific as Biden visits Tokyo. That took place uh, as he was over here meeting with these guys, but um, just kind of, uh, we're kind of seeing that alliance, right? China, Russia, we are definitely gonna be going against the two of them. At the same time, uh, you can bet your bottom dollar on it. So. Uh, buckle up. This is just one of many things to come. All right. Um, now here's one that, that I just wanted to point out because I saw this happen with a truckload of eggs in Dallas last week. And, uh, and it was like 30,000 pounds of, of, uh, eggs that got toppled. This is fertilizer in Canada. And look at the derail here. You can see some of that fertilizer on the ground, but this is, more and more of this is happening. I mean, what are the odds that the train carrying fertilizer derails? I mean, it, you can't make this stuff up. It's absolutely crazy, but we keep seeing things like this. Either plants are catching on fire or, you know, vehicles are getting overturned. Trains are getting derailed. I just, it seems awfully coincidental given the fact that where we are with our crops, with our, with our production, with our, shortages, everything. It's, it's just, it's absolutely crazy. And so now we talked a little bit about the power grids when I was looking at the weather there just a minute ago. Uh, it says here that 1 billion people at risk of power blackouts as global grids are stretched. Um, we can see it in the U.S. I can tell you here in Texas, uh, up until last winter, I've never had any kind of major deal with, with uh, blackouts. And now all of a sudden it seems to be this big thing know what's going on. Uh, I, what has really changed? I don't know. I don't think anything's changed. This seems to be on purpose. Um, <laughs> that's all I can say. Uh, yeah, we need some new power grids, obviously, but uh, this stuff just seems to be, you know, uh, what are the odds? Like I said, same thing with the trade and derailing, right? So anyway, this, uh, this ties in mainly to the heat that's going on in uh, Pakistan and in India. Uh, and the fact that they are having this rolling blackout because of the heat wave and stuff like that. So uh, just eyes on it. All right, let's go over here real fast. Let's take a look at the ships and see what's going on around the world. I'll start out here in Long Beach. I want to show you, uh, we do have our first boat that I've actually seen coming in from Shanghai. <laughs> uh, the, normally it's just a bunch of them. Uh, nothing really. If you look out here, these boats that are parked, that one's going in. There's two, two or three. Oil tankers, which is really interesting, uh, sitting in the Long Beach port. Normally, it's like filled with cargo. And uh, again, Shanghai, the stuff is just not making it here yet. It's going to be weeks after they turn on their production before stuff comes in here. Now, you can see they are still stacked up uh, big time. And, uh, you know, control chaos, I don't know. Um, I do know that they are still having manpower issues. They're not hitting the rates that they used to hit. Shanghai is the busiest port in the world. And so you can see everything even to the south is still pretty stacked up. Now, uh, Sri Lanka, uh, again, you notice there is a little bit of heavy, I don't know, congestion there at the south of the island. Uh, but the port is basically the same emptiness as it was before. I see a couple ships leaving, uh, but that port is emptied out. Now think about this, 22.4 million people on that island. And they look to be cut off, man. I'm not seeing any kind of, you know, you would think you'd see an increase in aid. And of course, the Russia piece is flowing like, uh, just hadn't missed a beat. Notice there are tankers out here uh, off of Constanta as well as cargo ships. Probably in the mix right there um, are some military vessels as well. I'll have to look on our military map and see if we see anything uh, that would indicate that. But um, let's get over here to that, speaking of military vessels. Uh, one thing real fast, we're talking East Coast. Uh, we'll show you, we do have a Canadian warship that is basically rolling, uh, rolling north. I don't know if that's related. Uh, that may have been down here in Canada. And uh, I'm telling you, you just can't get through a show without the dogs barking. It absolutely amazes me. These are Coast Guard guys here. Uh, more Coast Guard stuff. Uh, but that's the only thing I see off the shore of Florida in terms of being able to see it, but that is a Canadian warship uh, patrol. Uh, that could have been down there in Guantanamo Bay, maybe. Um, but let's back up a little bit. Let's get over here to 
the Black Sea. I just kind of show you what's going on there. We do have this uh, Soviet boat SB-36 that's in here. Uh, got a couple of things parked here. Remember, this is Crimea, and uh, that is Russia. Uh, that is controlled. This is all Russia over here. And then uh, as you get kind of to this side, Turkey down in here, Istanbul is a pretty big port. You can see quite a bit moving in this region uh, as they try to get through that strait right there. Uh, I did find that one interesting, health control. Uh, who knows? Uh, anyway, but that, uh, you know, that kind of is what we're looking like in the Black Sea. And then out here, in this general area to the east side of the UK, you can see this looks to be where your NATO exercise is kind of happening. It looks to be a pretty big naval event versus an air event. Okay. So anyway, we'll keep our eye on that. Again, uh, what we're looking for are these dots to start moving out and getting a lot of arrows, right? That basically means you got movement of uh, naval vessels and, um, you know, they're not going to sit in the ports uh, if we're at war. That's for sure. Okay. All right, over here to this side of the house, this is your PSYOP, cyber threat type of uh, environment uh, as we were just looking at the ghost in the machine. Um, just looking at this, you can tell the U.S. is getting pretty peppered. I don't know about you guys. I got knocked offline several times yesterday with stuff. Uh, very interesting, uh, you know, very surgical, really, uh, taking out things like Shippo, right, where all of a sudden you can't ship anything. That's not just me. That are that big companies use Shippo. Uh, those, they were offline almost all day yesterday. So, uh, But it looks like uh, there is a little bit of an uptick getting peppered here in the U.S. More U.S. strikes than anywhere else, it looks like, too. Um, so we'll keep our eye on that. All right, let's get over here to Ramstein. A lot of activity going on in Germany. Uh, you're going to see the arrival of three aircraft. This is actually a uh, Atlas Air 767-300, another Atlas Air 747-400, a FedEx Bird MD-11, right? That's what came inbound. Uh, that's on the board today. And then leaving, we've got a Camber flight. Uh, we've got, uh, looks like one outbound to Dover Air Force Base. That's a 747-400. And then this MD-11 from FedEx uh, also coming in. Now, that right there could be baby formula. Um, this right here, from a Dover standpoint, could be troops. Definitely with a camber flight, it's probably going to be a troop-related flight. So we'll bump into that and see where it's headed. Looks to be headed, um, very interesting, down into this general region. So Hungary, Bulgaria, uh, somewhere in there. It's still at 37,000 feet. Uh, that thing could be actually headed down into anywhere from Israel to the Middle East. So, um, but that one just left Ramstein. That is definitely troops. Okay. All right. Biggs Army Airfield, very quiet. Nothing really going on. We get into the arrivals, uh, see if we had anything. I've got nothing. Uh, when you look at this, you're looking for the type aircraft as you come through it. Uh, because that's going to give you an indicator you got charter flights or something else coming inbound. Uh, there could be a C-17 or two buried in this big mix right here, but uh, I'm not seeing it right now. Usually that's a reach call sign. I don't see any of that. These are all little local flights um, in and out of the airport there, uh, military local flights. All right, over to the Camber flights. Uh, these are one, actually one of this one here is the one we just looked at coming out of Ramstein, headed, headed kind of southeast. Uh, but you can see very, very busy and active. Uh, this is probably the most cam camber flights we've seen in uh, seven of them um, in recent weeks. So it's very, very active. Uh, we've got one coming, looks to be coming inbound, looks like it stopped up here. Uh, but uh, very active in Europe. So... Again, that's troop movement, and uh, no indication that it's backing down, that's for sure. So uh, here's that one uh, from the other day. I did want to point this out. I brought this back up. We were looking at it as it left Ramstein. Yeah, uh, it was it a day ago, okay, uh, on Monday. And so uh, just want to show you where it ended up. It's down here in Turkey, which that could be where this other Ramstein flight is actually going, is into Turkey. Uh, we see it right now kind of over this general area. Uh, could be headed into Turkey, which would be an interesting buildup, uh, or at least an, um, strategically uh, to put them right there, given the fact, uh, keep in mind, you've got you know Syria and then you've got Israel right here. 
Uh, so putting some troops in right there would be a very, very interesting, uh, to say the least. Okay. Um, okay. Now, uh, let's see here. We do have, uh, this is going to be Royal Air Force, very active as well. Again, this one here, I don't know where that's coming. Uh, looks to be coming out of Cyprus. Uh, only at 2,100 feet climbing out, 213 knots. But this one is out. This is right on kind of in the general area, Israel and uh, Egypt. And so, yeah, very, very active. It looks like the two main pri primary movers in the region right now, at least for today, UK, US, um, you know, we got the lion's share of all of it, don't we? Of course, the US is knee deep in this uh, and we're overcommitted <laughs> and underdelivered. So uh, this is gonna be your only Omni up right now coming in from Okinawa, Japan to Seattle. That is troops coming back. Uh, probably on a rotation, if I had to guess. And uh, we'll see, we'll continue to see a buildup over here for sure. All right, from the Ruski standpoint, got one little bird up doing, looks to be actually flying in and out of this airport here, doing some touch and goes. It doesn't show me a full uh, circle map, but uh, that, uh, if you click on this, kind of drill down into it, you can see, just looks to be running touch and goes there at the airport. So that's going to be your Ruskies for today. Let's get over here to the Sam flights. I got nothing. Uh, this is kind of consistent last couple days. Uh, Sam's going to be your, uh, your dignitaries. It's going to be your blue and white Air Force birds, uh, kind of like Air Force One, et cetera. Um, but when they get to Sam, that is basically special air mission is what that stands for. And um, normally we see a couple going, and we've been seeing a lot of dignitaries going into Europe, but it looks like today... We got nothing on the board. So, all right, that gets us over here to our uh, immigrant machine. Just kind of show you what's going on. A lot of movement down south coming out of our border towns. You can see two flights out of Laredo, one to Port-au-Prince, Haiti, one to Bogota, Colombia. That more than likely is uh, giving some people a little deportation uh, back to the home countries. Some of these others I don't know about. You got Miami headed up to Cincy. <laughs> Maybe not so much uh, exfil, but infill. So, uh, again, we just continue to watch this because it gives us pretty good data points on uh, the amount of activity happening at the border. And uh, as I was touching on the other day, Amazon and Walmart are getting ready to go into layoffs. The reason for that is because their inventories are starting to lean out. Uh, Amazon, they have got it down to a science. Uh, they know based on amount of SKUs and line items and inventory levels, how many heads they need to actually operate that efficiently. And so um, when you see them laying off when they've been in a hiring flurry, you can't get enough workers, uh, that's a very, very big indicator on what is uh, kind of happening with our supply chain. Uh, to see that report and that write-up is uh, uh, disturbing from a supply chain perspective because that uh, tells you, uh, what's coming because those guys are usually pretty fat on inventory, right? Uh, I do want to point this out uh, from a market trend perspective. If you're watching, this is a year to date. Uh, it is on a very steady decline, as are the markets around the world. Um, you can look, NASDAQ, everything has just been on the, the decline steadily doing a burn down. Where the bottom is, I don't know, but uh, the only thing that seems to be going up right now is oil. Uh, which is not good. We've had, uh, if you look at our um, CPI for energy, uh, it's going through the roof. And so they're speculating oil is going to get to around $200 a barrel by the end of the year, uh, given the current environment. So just uh, just something we need to keep our eyes on. But if your 401k is looks like it's bleeding down, uh, you're not imagining things. It is definitely uh, on, the, on the down low. Uh, and I don't know where it's going to stop, but... Um, it looks to be a 2008 type of an event, right? So, um, all right. Now, let's just take a quick look. You will notice we've got a B-52 coming back. Uh, this one is, uh, looks like it was out there while the president was, was out there and uh, looks to be coming back in today. That's a long flight. Of course, for a B-52, it's not long at all. I mean, they can hold about 210,000 pounds of fuel. Um, and so... Uh, you know, the whole entire wing is nothing but fuel. So this thing is, is uh, uh, looks to be headed back inbound here to the U.S. So 
All right, looking at uh, our map here, let's just see what we've got. 255 up on Open ADSB Exchange, uh, which is only about five or six higher than normal. So uh, as clustered as it may look, it is not as clustered as it may look, right? These are mostly uh, trainers, it looks like, a lot of trainer activity going on. Of course, the East Coast uh, Northeast is popping. Lots of stuff happening up here. So. All right, let's go over here to Guantanamo Bay. Uh, as we get here to the bottom of our hour, uh, nothing really on the board. We had one ATN uh, Air Transport International that came out of here, went to Jacksonville, and uh, that was about it. Uh, actually, get over here on the departure board, and you can see uh, there he is right there. That's the only thing we really have. We've had this one come in. It's already cleared the board. Uh, that was yesterday, and this was yesterday, actually. So. Nothing on. Today is very, very quiet there at the spa. Uh, one flight I wanted to point out. I was looking at this yesterday. caught my eye because we had these storms rolling through uh, last night. You can see uh, pretty, uh, usually in Texas, when you see these bright pink colors, uh, that usually means there's hail. And uh, we get some very large hail in Texas. If you're not from Texas uh, and you've never experienced the hail here, uh, when I say baseball, softball size hail, I am not joking. It is bad and it will wreck a roof and a car and anything in its path it kills animals uh, when you start seeing that uh, and you start hearing reports of large hail you typically don't go to bed at night you're typically eyes on this but i was looking at this flight and this is actually a, a national oceanic and atmospheric administration flight uh, and i was watching this dude roll in i thought at first maybe he was missing his approach that he was trying to wait for weather and then kind of a holding pattern and was going to land but that wasn't the case. This dude flew down. He actually was running outside, just right to the outside of the storm, almost like a storm chaser would do. Uh, very similar to how they do in the hurricanes. Um, but uh, they don't fly really directly into these storms. At least I didn't see them, although this path does come across it. Um, but if you look at the altitude and the speed, you can see this thing is actually, there's a couple points where it's free falling. <laughs> bouncing around, getting slammed. Uh, these guys, I don't know who would want to even fly in something like that. Absolutely insane. Again, here's another one you can see just outside of that weather. Um, you can see actually flying in and out of this weather. Uh, Altitude-wise, look at this. I mean, you can see the speed gyration here, uh, but his altitude, very, very bumpy and bouncy. Uh, you can see, very hard to see those little lines that are, that are spiking within this line right here that's a turbulent flight and uh he's not really super high in terms of altitude he starts out around twelve thousand, and bounces his way down to about eight thousand, and then back up uh but you can see in and out of that storm i thought that's interesting like i said I, you couldn't pay me <laughs> enough to do something like that i think the hurricane hunters are crazy enough as it is but this one again in and out of a storm like like, hang on, uh, you know, it's, this is, uh, if you've ever been on a commercial flight and thrown through, hit a thunderstorm, uh, you know how bumpy that is. And so this is a P3. This is actually a Navy P3 Orion, which is uh, a, a prop job. Uh, again, you can see the airspeed. You can see the spikes in the lines here as they fly in and out of these storms. These are bad storms, by the way. So anyway, just an interesting flight. If you want to track it, it's NOAA-42. I just always find it interesting to, to watch them and NASA because you, you just never know what they're up to uh, on the edge of these storms. You know, are they popping things out? Are they experimenting? Uh, you never know. But anyway, so listen, that's going to be it for today. If you're in the chat, don't forget we got our Q&A Wednesday. I'll see you guys over on that side of it. Uh, man, just buckle up. This looks like this is going to be a crazy summer coming up and uh, definitely a wild winter. So keep that powder dry and stay frosty. We'll talk soon. God bless. Monkey out. Check out the latest gear and products at monkeyworksus.com.